My name is Katie, and I'm a nurse. My husband Jack stays at home now. He used to work at a company, but he quit because he didn't get along with his new boss. When Jack told me he quit, I was mad because he didn't talk to me about it first. But then I tried to stay positive, thinking it might be better for him to leave the job before he got too unhappy. Even though Jack isn't earning money now, I have a stable job and we live in a house my mother gave me before she passed away. So we don't have to pay rent and we're managing fine. At first, I was worried and stressed about Jack not working. But since he's been doing a good job with the housework, I'm starting to get used to it and even enjoy it. One day, I came home from work and found my sister-in-law, Brittany, visiting. Welcome home, honey, Jack said. I hope you had a good day at work. Oh, I forgot to mention that Brittany was coming over. Sorry about that. I was a bit annoyed with Jack for not telling me in advance, but it was nice to see him so happy. I understand. It's okay, I said. But next time, please let me know ahead of time. Jack promised he would, and then he told Brittany it was time for her to leave. Brittany said, I don't want to go yet. Since there's enough space here, I'd like to stay over tonight. I saw Jack looking worried and he quickly said, No, Brittany, it's too sudden. Please go home today. Brittany looked at me angrily and left. I was curious why Brittany came all the way over, especially since she had recently gone through a divorce and had nowhere else to go. She had moved back into my parents' small apartment and they had asked her to find a job and help out with expenses, which made her feel unwelcome. I felt bad for her. After Brittany left, I told Jack how I felt. I didn't understand why he was so concerned about her. Jack explained, I'm sorry about today. I've been looking for a job without success. I just needed someone to talk to, so I let her stay. I was upset with Jack for his thoughtless actions, but I knew he needed support. I said, okay, it's better to have someone around than to be alone in that situation. But next time, please call me and make sure she leaves before I get home. I wondered if I was being too lenient with Jack but I made it clear that he needed to inform me ahead of time and didn't bring it up again. Two days later, Jack texted me while I was at work. Hey, hope your day is going well. Brittany wants to come over again. Is that okay with you? You're working until 9 p.m., right? I was concerned about how long Brittany planned to stay, even though Jack promised she would leave before 9 p.m., I replied. Fine, but make sure she leaves as soon as possible. I really didn't want Brittany to come over, but seeing Jack happy about it made me willing to let him enjoy his time with his sister. It was a super busy day at work, and I completely forgot Brittany was coming. When I got home, Brittany was still there. Why are you still here? I asked. Jack saw I was upset and panicked. I'm so sorry, he said. I've been talking to Brittany for a long time and didn't realize the time. She'll leave now. Brittany, looking annoyed, said, Yes, I'm going home now. She packed her things and left with a sigh. I didn't like her attitude, so I said, what's her problem? It's not her house. Doesn't she have any manners? Jack replied, you're being too harsh. Brittany came all this way just to listen to me. I thought they could have met somewhere else, but I was too tired to argue. I said, you're right, sorry. I'm just exhausted today, so I'm going to get some rest. I could tell Jack wanted to say more, but I was too tired and went to bed. The next day, on my day off, Jack brought up what happened. I'm sorry about yesterday, he said. I realize I should have been more considerate of you and Brittany. Since I haven't had much time to talk with Jack lately and saw how much he wanted us to get along with Brittany, I said, I understand now. I've been so busy that I haven't made time for us. I did say too much yesterday. I'm sorry. Jack was relieved we talked it out. He said, Okay, I'm making your favorite dish, meatball pasta. It'll be ready soon. After Jack started cooking, his phone rang. Who's calling? I asked. Jack said, It's Brittany. I'm not sure why she's calling. I had a bad feeling and didn't want him to answer, but I suggested it might be important. Jack checked with me before picking up the phone. I couldn't hear Brittany's side of the conversation, but it ended quickly. I asked Jack, What did Brittany want? He replied, She said she has something to tell me, so she's coming over now. I didn't understand why I had to deal with her on my day off and felt irritated, but since she was already on her way, I couldn't do much about it. Jack said, I'll make pasta for Brittany too, and started cooking happily. He didn't realize I was upset, and I didn't understand why he didn't just say no to her visit. 
I decided this was a good time to address the issue with her directly. After about ten minutes, the doorbell rang. I was surprised to see Brittany standing there with a large piece of luggage, given how far she was staying. I had a bad feeling but let her in. Jack was still cooking, so I asked Brittany, what's going on? Brittany, looking like she had been crying, said, I got kicked out of my parents' place. They said I have no right to stay there because I'm not working. Aren't they terrible parents? My bad feelings grew stronger as I listened. Jack responded, that's awful. Family should help each other. They're terrible. I was irritated by Jack's reaction but kept quiet since it wasn't directly my issue. Brittany then said, I have nowhere else to go, so I want to live here. I really didn't want Brittany to stay with us and tried to refuse, but before I could say anything Jack said, well, there's no other option but for you to stay with us. Luckily, we have a spare room, so you can stay from today. I glared at Jack. What's with that expression? He asked. Brittany needs help. I couldn't hold it in anymore and said, What are you doing? Don't make decisions like this on your own. Jack, you're not working, and neither is Brittany. I can't support both of you on my salary alone. Just then, something hit me on the head, and I was shocked. Brittany then said, Jack, don't throw an egg at her. She was laughing hysterically, and when I touched my hair, I found eggshells. It's your fault, Mary. Be nicer to Brittany. If you're going to be rude, we're getting a divorce. And if we get divorced, you know you'll have to leave this house. Jack looked at me with a smirk, and Brittany watched me with satisfaction. Since I didn't respond, they thought I was convinced. Jack said, Mary, are you ready to apologize? If you are, go take a shower, and then we can eat the meatball pasta I made and discuss how we're all going to live together. Jack happily went back to cooking, while Brittany relaxed on the couch, snickering and watching TV. I had a lot to say to both of them, but for now, I grabbed Brittany's luggage and threw it off the balcony. They were shocked and yelled, What are you doing? Are you out of your mind? Jack panicked and told me to go get the stuff I had thrown out. But I replied, Why should I? This is my house. I won't let you do anything more. I said firmly. Jack argued, What are you talking about? This is our house. As husband and wife, it's my house too, and I'm letting my sister stay here. I just scoffed and laughed. Jack asked, What's so funny? Don't you know I own this house? I said, It was given to me by my mother, so you have no claim to it. Jack and Brittany looked shocked. Really? Oh no, that can't be right, they said. Even if that's true, since we're married, it doesn't really matter. They started mumbling, so I said, This house is mine. If you want to live with your sister so badly, why don't you rent a place for both of you? Also, why should I support people who aren't working? Jack, you worked hard until you quit, so I didn't say anything, but now you're not even doing housework. Honestly, I'd rather live alone. When I shared how I'd been feeling, Jack replied, Oh, really? So that's how you feel? Well, I don't want a wife who doesn't support my family and can't even appreciate me for taking care of the house. As he said this, Jack pulled out a divorce paper. Seeing how neatly it was prepared, I realized that Brittany must have come up with the idea. I've already filled out my part, Jack said. All you need to do is sign it. I'll give you some time to think. Just contact me when you want to apologize. After that, they both left. I quickly took a shower, signed the divorce papers, and went to submit them. I suspected that Jack had shown me the papers to scare me. Even though it was Brittany's idea, Jack went along with it, and I didn't want a husband who would do that to his wife. A few days later, Jack called and asked, Are you ready to apologize? I was furious and replied, Shouldn't you be the one calling me first? I don't have time for this. Jack's condescending tone made me even angrier. I said, Why are you calling me all of a sudden? Why should I contact you, a stranger now? He responded, What do you mean, a stranger? Is something wrong with you? It was clear Jack didn't understand what was happening, so I told him calmly, I've submitted the divorce papers, and it's finalized. We're strangers now. Also, I sold the house. So even if you want to come back, it won't matter. I've quit my job and am starting fresh somewhere else. I've sent all your things to your parents, and they should be arriving soon. I'm a bit worried, though, since their place is small. Will everything fit? Jack sounded confused and started arguing with someone on his end of the phone. Anyway, you were the one who suggested getting a divorce, right? I have nothing more to say to you. 
Since I want nothing to do with you, I'm going to block you. Goodbye. My ex-husband was shouting on the phone, but I didn't care. I hung up and blocked his number. A few months later, I was in the area where I used to live. While stopping by a supermarket, I saw someone who looked like Jack working there. It seemed he had made a mistake at work, and a much younger woman was scolding him. How many times do I have to tell you? Don't make me repeat myself, she said, while other workers laughed. I felt a bit sorry for him, but he was just a stranger to me now. Maybe if Jack had handled his sister better, things might have turned out differently. Still, I'm glad I divorced him. I'm enjoying my life as a single person.